Brahma said, In the meantime, O celestial sage, on hearing of the incident, I, the grandfather of the worlds, came there. I consoled Daksha as before. Clever that I was, I made him friendly with you. O best of sages, I consoled you, my own son, beloved of the devas, and taking you with love, effected conciliation. Then Daksha, consoled by me, begot of his wife sixty comely daughters. Without any lassitude, he performed their marriages with Dharma and others. O excellent sage, listen to that with pleasure. Daksha gave ten of his daughters duly in marriage to Dharma, thirteen to Kashipa the sage, and twenty-seven to the moon. He gave two daughters each to Bhrigu, Angiras, and Krishashva. The other daughters were given to Tarkshya. The sons and grandsons and descendants of these filled the three worlds. A detailed narration is not attempted here. Some say that Shiva was the eldest of his daughters. Some say that she was the middle, and some say that she was the youngest. All three opinions are correct in different kalpas. After the birth of his daughters, Daksha Prajapati and his wife meditated on the mother of the universe with pleasure. Then he lovingly eulogized her with faltering voice and repeatedly paid respects to her, humbly joining the palms in reverence. The goddess, who was highly delighted, thought within herself, I shall incarnate in Virini in order to keep my word. O oh, excellent sage, then the mother of the universe spoke to Daksha in mind. Then Daksha shone forth splendidly. In an auspicious hour he deposited his semen in his wife. Thus, full of compassion, Shiva began to reside in the womb of Daksha's consort. All the characteristic signs of pregnancy appeared in her. Dear one, thanks to the power of the presence of Shiva, Virini had an auspicious appearance and shone all the more with mental pleasure. As befitting the loftiness of his mind, customs and manners current as in his family, and the injunctions of the Vedas, Daksha performed the rites of Pungsavana, etc., out of affection. Great festivities accompanied these rites. Daksha presented liberal sons of money to the Brahmanas. On coming to know that the goddess had come to the womb of Virini, Vishnu and other devas became very happy. They all approached her and paid frequent respect to the benefactress of the worlds, eulogizing the mother of the universe. Delighted in their hearts, they praised Daksha and Virini in various ways and went to their respective abodes. O oh, Narada, nine months had passed with due observance of worldly conventions. In the tenth month, in an auspicious happy hour, when the moon, the stars, and the planets were favorably disposed, Shiva suddenly appeared, O oh sage, in front of her mother. As soon as she was born, Daksha was highly pleased. On seeing her extremely brilliant, he was convinced that she was the goddess Shiva herself. O oh, excellent sage, when she was born there was a gentle shower from the clouds, accompanied by that of flowers. The quarters became tranquil immediately. The devas gathered in the sky and played on musical instruments. Sacrificial fires kindled calmly. Everything indicated auspiciousness. On seeing the mother of the universe born of Virini, Daksha joined his palms in reverence, paid respects to her, and eulogized her. Daksha said, O Goddess, the eternal mother of the universe, obeisance to thee. O great Goddess, the truthful and truth-featured, be pleased. I bow to thee, the bestower of benefits, thee who art auspicious, calm, great illusion, mystic slumber, and identical with the universe. I bow to thee, the great mother of the universe, the great goddess, by whom formerly Brahma had been directed to create the worlds. I bow to thee, great support of the universe, 
the great goddess by whom formerly Vishnu had been directed to sustain the universe, which he has been doing always. I bow to thee, the great mother of the universe, the great goddess, by whom formerly Rudra had been directed to annihilate the universe, which he has been doing always. I bow to thee, Shiva, of sattvika, rajasika, and tamasika forms, performing everything always, and the goddess mother of the three deities. O goddess, enjoyment of worldly pleasures and salvation are always within the reach of that person who meditates on thee in the form of vidya and avidya every day. O goddess, he who directly perceives thee, the sanctifying deity, will certainly attain salvation with the discrimination of vidya and avidya. O mother of the universe, those who eulogize thee with the names of Bhavani, Ambika, Jaganmaya, and Durga will have everything. Brahma said, Shiva, the mother of the universe, eulogized by Daksha the intelligent, said to Daksha without making it heard by her mother, Shiva, the great goddess and the source of future creation, made everyone deluded and said in such a manner that Daksha heard the truth and not anyone else. The goddess said, O Prajapati, I had been propitiated formerly for becoming your daughter. Your wish has been fulfilled now. You can carry on your activities of penance. Having spoken thus to Daksha, the goddess assumed infancy through her illusory power and began to cry near her mother. On hearing the cry, the woman spoke in agitation. The servant maids, too, became pleasantly agitated. On seeing the comely form of a Sikhni's daughter, the women rejoiced. The citizens raised shouts of victory then. There were great festivities with songs and musical instruments. On seeing the unearthly face of their daughter, the pleasure of Daksha and Asikni knew no bounds. Daksha duly performed all the conventional ceremonies and the rites of the Vedas. He gave various gifts to the Brahmanas and wealth to others. Songs and dances were performed everywhere in a befitting manner. Musical instruments played auspicious songs repeatedly. Hari and other gods came with their attendants, along with the sages, and joined the festivities. On seeing the daughter of Daksha, the goddess, mother of the universe, they bowed and eulogized her with auspicious hymns. In their great delight they shouted cries of victory. They praised Daksha and Virini in particular. Then, at their bidding, the delighted Daksha named her Uma, since she inherited good qualities and was greatly admired. Her other names in the world were assigned afterwards. They are auspicious and quell miseries in particular. With palms joined in reverence, Daksha bowed to Hari, me, the devas and sages. He eulogized and worshipped all. Then Vishnu and others praised Daksha, and in joyous mood returned to their respective abodes, remembering Shiva accompanied by Shiva. Consecrating the daughter in a befitting manner, her mother fed her with fresh milk in the usual manner of feeding infants. Duly nurtured by Virni and the noble-souled Daksha, she flourished every day like the digit of the moon in the bright half of a month. O oh, excellent Brahmana, even in her infancy, the good qualities entered her like all the beautiful digits entering the moon. While she was engaged in various sports in the midst of her girlfriends, she used to draw pictures of Shiva every day. Whenever she sang sweet songs, as is usual in childhood, she remembered Stanu, Rudra, the suppressor of Kama. The couple, Daksha and his wife, found her unrivaled mercy increase, even as she had been a great devotee of childhood itself. Endowed with qualities of childhood and making her own residence flourish, she delighted her parents forever.